The Stars and Stripes show is brought to you by the U.S. Embassy. It's Gabs FM Power to engage your world. And of course, welcome to the Stars and Stripes show, proudly brought to you by the U.S. Mission in partnership with Gabs FM, hashtag America in Botswana. And of course, today we have a great show coming your way, talking shared prosperity. Now, you must understand the objective of this show is to highlight the shared economy. How Palama takes your part and parcel of the shared economy. And one thing that we're going to speak about today is the theme on the Peace Corps and the their role in the nation of Botswana, their role as a civic uh, responsibility in the nation of Botswana. Look out for that conversation coming your way shortly. 14962 is our SMS dial, 395 is our studio line, plus 267-395-6962 is our WhatsApp line. Look out for it. It's the Stars and Stripes radio show. Good morning. The Stars and Stripes show is brought to you by the U.S. Embassy. It's Gabs FM Power to engage your world And as rightfully said You're on the Stars and Stripes radio show In the building I'm speaking to two phenomenal people I have the uh, pleasure of introducing Daniela Montimara Who's Peace Corps Country Director Daniela, how are you? I'm great, how are you doing? Fantastic, how was your week? Phenomenal, phenomenal. We're, pre- we're preparing for a big swearing-in ceremony okay. So. It's all a big is well, thing. all is well. Okay, yes. Okay, fantastic. And of course, we have Rem Podikole, uh, Peace Corps project manager, and of course, programs manager and life skills. Which one is it, uh, uh, Rem? Uh, project is, manager is or program both? is program manager for life skills assignment. Yeah. Right. Um, maybe to highlight that we have uh, four assignment areas. Okay. Uh, being uh, clinic and health teams. Mm-hmm. Um. We have the ones which we call local com- uh, capacity building uh, folks. Yes. As well as uh, the ones whom uh, we, we place with NGOs. Okay. Or we call them um, CSCB, um, Civil Society Capacity Building. But I'm focused more on the life skills uh, assignment. Well, I love it. Well, welcome to the show, to the both of you. One thing that I know about the Peace Corps is that it contributes to the advancement of Botswana from this perspective. Especially what I liked that you just mentioned, uh, capacity. You know, one thing that I've always, always appreciated because I'm a founder of an NGO as well mm-hmm. and I've engaged with a Peace Corps uh, man, uh, member who was a grant writer and it really really changed our organization and the impact on our organization. Danielle let me bring you into the conversation to the Motswanos wondering what is the Peace Corps what do they represent, what is your mandate, who is the Peace Corps? Wonderful. I'm so happy to talk about the Peace Corps. Um, it, the Peace Corps is actually a U.S. government agency. Okay. Um, founded in 1961 by President John F. Kennedy. Mm-hmm. Um, our mission is to promote world peace and friendship. Okay. That, and that mission has not changed since 1961. We have the same mission in every country in which we serve. Wow. And over the last 61 years. So to achieve that mission, we have three primary objectives. Yes. The first, what you're referencing and what Poe is uh, talking about, mm-hmm. is to bring technical um, assistance to people in the country where we serve. Okay. The second objective is to promote and build a better understanding of Americans and about the United States to the communities and with the people where we serve. Wow. And the third is to promote a better understanding of the people and the culture in the countries where we serve to other Americans. Oh, okay. So that That's third goal continues for a lifetime. And... I actually was a Peace Corps volunteer wow. many years ago in Guinea. And I can say that when we, once you're a volunteer, we never call ourselves former volunteers. Uh-huh. We call ourselves returned volunteers. I like that. Because the service never ends. Yes, absolutely. So just correct me. Do I pronounce it as Peace Corps or Peace Corps? 
Uh, in the U.S., we say Peace Corps. Okay. Just just for reference sake. Uh, let me bring him, Paul, back into the conversation. Paul, mm-hmm. uh, how long have you been uh, a member of the Peace Corps and working for the Peace Corps? And obviously, Kaore, uh, as a Motswana, what mm-hmm. is your experience in terms of being a foot soldier on the ground? Mm-hmm. Is this mandate really achievable? Are we seeing some form of social impact from this relationship between the BW government and the U.S. government? Mm-hmm. Uh, that's that's a good question. Um, I've been with uh, Peace Corps, or I've been a Peace Corps staff member for just over ten years now. Nice. And um, you know, the second part of a question, I would say um, there's a lot uh, that we are seeing uh, mm-hmm. in terms of um, yeah, the, the the impact that you've seen, Kore, on the ground as a Motswana, what are you seeing? What kind of impact are you seeing? Is it really a beneficial relationship? That's right. So um, I will use an example. Normally when uh, you know, I answer a question like this, I like to use uh, real life Please. Uh, examples. Please. Um, as I indicated earlier on before, that uh, we have what we call uh, assignment, ed- assignment areas. Yes. Where we have uh, split our volunteers into four uh, areas. We have the ones that we place in schools, uh-huh. which um, I would say um, I'm the program manager for last skills. Okay. Uh, the ones in clinics or DHMTs, mm-hmm. uh, the ones in NGOs, like you mentioned, yes. well, that we have worked with a physical volunteer before, as well as uh, district its coordinating offices. Absolutely. In all these assignment areas, we have seen an impact where... Uh, one, a quick example could be a one volunteer who has impacted the life of Yamba Zwana in the Butiti area. Okay. Whom he realized that, like, these guys are so smart mm-hmm. and they have potential. Mm-hmm. And um, he worked uh, with Marua Bula um, here in Gaps okay. uh, to help secure a scholarship for them. Wow. Because uh, in the. So, one other thing was Kobotit. Okay. Uh, and I will use, uh, I don't know if it's okay for me to mention yes. the, the site. Yes, um, please go ahead. This, this was Mupipi. Okay. A small village called Mepipi just out, outside Letlagani. Mm-hmm. And um, what uh, he realized was that most of the kids, of our kids in rural areas, mm-hmm. they don't have uh, what I would call exposure. Yes, absolutely. You have smart kids out there. Yes, absolutely. Who sometimes, uh, maybe because of uh, lack of exposure. Yes, they end up, um, you know, not going far in their lives. Mm-hmm. Uh, and he worked with um, Maruapula Senior Secondary School, wow. or yeah, Senior Secondary School, to secure a scholarship for those two guys, and wow. uh, that was successful. This I can't tell where they are today because this was like a couple of years back. Mm-hmm. Chances are that wherever they are, they might have finished their um, uh, BGCSE, um, you know, um, uh, term. Yes. Um, that was one thing. Another a good example would be, um, you know, clinic and health volunteers who works in clinic uh, who have, you know, help strengthen uh, the pharmacies of our clinics wow. uh, through supply chain management. Where, um, you know, I wish I could have a picture here where I could show you the before and the after, mm-hmm. you know, like the, um, how the um, folks will do. Uh, so how those pharmacies will be like. After and the impact. after the impact, how they will leave those pharmacies like mm-hmm. in a very good shape, having helped, uh, you know, create databases, be it for inventory of our drugs, um, uh, you know, helping um, or coming to trainings that we provide. Uh, to our to our volunteers with their counterparts. Counterparts are the people or project partners, mm-hmm. uh, folks that we partner them with. So that, those are the two quick ones that quickly come top of my mind. Absolutely. Well, welcome to the Stars and Stripes radio show, proudly brought to you by the U.S. Embassy in partnership with Gabs FM. Hashtag America in Botswana. Daniela, let me bring you back into the conversation. Are you telling me that the Peace Corps um, has specialized skill Skilled citizens of the United States So I could be swift And I'm saying Okay I come from a radio broadcasting background I, I, I registered to become a Peace Corps uh, a volunteer And you could station me In a rural area of Botswana Is that what Am I, am I understanding um, The structure it could be. It really depends on what our projects are okay. in the country. So I would say one thing that is distinct about the Peace Corps is that we are in any country that we're in at the invitation of the government. Wow. And our project, our priorities are driven by the priorities of the government okay. of Botswana. Yes. So if the, for example, Peace Corps came to Botswana in 1966, just wow. um, at the, at, on the eve of independence. Yeah. Yes. And 
We left in 1997, but came back in 2003 at the specific request of President Mohai at the time. Okay. To address the HIV AIDS pandemic. Okay. So yeah. that was very clearly articulated to Peace Corps. That's where we need we need boots on the ground to mm-hmm. help uh, address this um, crisis in Botswana. Um, since then, that has that's really driven our programming since that time. I would say shared right, health. Shared health. Yes. So currently, so for example, if. Um, you know, if someone in the U.S. says, I want to go to Botswana and be a radio broadcaster, that might not align with our current projects and it doesn't align with what yes. the government has articulated to us yes. as being their priorities. Yes. So that might not work. But we're in the process currently, I'm sure many of your listeners know, especially listeners who tune into this uh, program. Stars and Stripes radio show, yes, yes absolutely. You've, I think you've probably talked about PEPFAR, yes. the President's Emergency Plan for AIDS Relief. Yes. And the, the fight in Botswana to um, address HIV AIDS. So in terms of the UN AIDS or the, the, the UN objectives of 95, 95, 95, 95, yes. should I spell those out or do we know what they are? No, no, please. We need to keep on re-echoing what they sure. are and the milestone achievements between BW government and, of course, the U.S. government. So the government of Botswana has achieved an extraordinary feat. Absolutely. Of not just 95, 95, 95, but they're at 95, 98, 98. Yes. The first 95 being, um, and oh, I, I don't have my PEPFAR colleagues here, so let me make sure I get this right. Okay. They're uh, listening, though. They listen the, the, to the <laughs> show. So uh, be careful there. Yeah, go ahead. Yes. So the first, the first 95 is a percentage of the population that know their status. Yes. The second 95 is the percentage of those who uh, who know their status and who are positive. Yes. Who are on antiretrovirals uh-huh. or ARVs. The third is of those who are on ARVs, how many are virally suppressed? Wow. So in Botswana, uh, the, the achievement is extraordinary. So as Peace Corps... We're also asking ourselves and we're having many conversations with our key stakeholders, including the government, about what is the best way for us to partner, to continue to partner with Botswana. So we're engaging in conversations with all our ministerial partners and and, uh, we're listening. Absolutely. Well, let's move on and let me bring him, Paul back into the conversation. Um, Paul, look, let's talk about life skills. Whether we like it or not, we're heading to become a knowledge-based economy. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, life skills is such an important component of life, including emotional intelligence, how to carry yourself, teamwork. These are skill sets that, you know, the private sector is demanding. What, just walk us through a day in your life as a staff member of Peace Corps. And, and what it means to be um, programs manager in line with life skills, engaging with uh, your beneficiaries, for lack of a better word. That's right. Um, one is a staff member, my um, you know, daily routine. Uh, one, I do uh, my administrative work, mm-hmm. but most importantly, supporting my volunteers on the ground. Okay. And uh, through my support, um, they are now zooming into their daily lives. Yes. Uh, one, <clears throat> they just live like our, um, you know, Botswana in the local com- or in the communities that we have placed them in. Mm-hmm. They eat what we eat. Mm-hmm. Um, you know. So these are Peace Corps volunteers. These are Peace Corps volunteers. So Arma Koaba United States Baroja Dele Lezengwe Koko. Absolutely. Oh, wow. Absolutely. Wow. Um, so, right now, we have been going through what we call uh, pre-service training. Mm-hmm. And with this pre-service training, we uh, position uh, we position them uh, to understand, um, you know, have a better understanding of how we live our daily lives. Okay. Um, so, by the time we uh, we take them to our communities, yes. they already have an idea that um, a Motswana in the morning wakes up, sweep the yard, sweep the house, 
do laundry um, or on weekends. Mm-hmm. Uh, so our cultural values and norms. Intercultural, absolutely. 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 Wow. And, and then, like you said, like, are they eating the same way? Uh, they will eat uh, your local, um, you know, um, you know, food. Mm-hmm. And then go to work, just like me and you uh, do on on daily basis. Mm-hmm. Go to work where they will, um, you know, support uh, our local initiatives. Uh, speaking of uh, schools, uh, which is life skills, they will go and uh, co-facilitate lessons with their uh, guidance and counseling teachers. If we place, when we place them in schools, they work with um, or the police and guidance and counseling department. So they will co-facilitate lessons with their uh, guidance and counseling teachers. Mm-hmm. Uh, co-train. Uh, it could be uh, kids or any other stakeholders that they may be in need of um, a training uh, at their communities. And um, one thing that I want to bring about, uh, they facilitate uh, extramural activities. Yes. Where uh, now beyond classrooms, what yes. can we do to ensure that we touch on the lives of uh, our young people uh, through different uh, interventions? Mm-hmm. Uh, we call we have what we call grassroots soccer, yes. where they can teach the young people through, um, you know, teach them HIV and AIDS uh, messaging or prevention through um, the use of soccer. Mm. You know, uh, we have... Um, Interventions where they can take them for camps, what what we call glow, uh, sort of girls leading our world, yes. just so that we tap into uh, you know that um, uh, into that girl child uh, and so forth. So there's so many uh, interventions that they do with our um, you know our young people as well as the um, you know um, um, I'll say partners yes. that we partner with at local level. You know, one thing that I love about the Peace Corps is the human touch and the mm-hmm. ability to actually go into communities and first take the time to understand who we are, mm-hmm. our cultural norms, what we represent as Botswana before assuming that, you know, obviously uh, coming from a U.S. background that things should happen that way. So I think that's thumbs up to the Peace Corps. Daniela, let me ask you this last question as we're fast running out of time. You know, how does one become a Peace Corps volunteer? Is it is it only how does for example, Batswana are listening out. Some of them are in the civic education space. Babangwe are in the rural areas. And they're like, you know, I would like to engage, you know, the U.S. Embassy or the Peace Corps and register to get a Peace Corps to come on the ground in line with shared health or whatever it may be. So a couple different questions in there. But so first of all, to become a volunteer. Yep. Um, one does have to be a U.S. citizen okay. and apply. And we're open to candidates from all backgrounds. Nice. So in terms of um, race, socioeconomic, language, um, age, um, we've had we've had volunteers even from Puerto Rico nice. who are U.S. citizens. Nice. Nice. So anyone, any American can apply, any qualified American can apply and become a volunteer. Um, in terms of serving in communities and, and if communities are interested in hosting a volunteer, yes. we have a process of an application process where communities can demonstrate a need. So they show that they have a job for uh-huh. the volunteer, okay. that they have community support. So uh-huh. we would start with the the Kosi, the Molaudi, yes. uh, make sure that there's really strong um, support from leadership and from community members to yes. host a volunteer. Yes, yes. Um, and checks and balances. Yeah, mm-hmm. we have. Of course, our swearing in is coming on Thursday. I, sh- I nice. should say. So that Thursday, tell us, tell us what's happening. What's the big thing that's coming? So let me start by saying that before March 2020. When with closure of international borders, we had to send all volunteers in the entire world back to the U.S. Okay. okay. Because borders were closing. We weren't sure what was going to happen. So it's taken us a while to get back to the field and get boots on the ground again. At the time we evacuated from Botswana, we had 140 volunteers. Wow. So that's 140 communities where we were with whom we were working. That is definitely impact. And we're very attached to our communities we've through throughout this period the staff has worked long and hard hours to maintain connections with those communities um, now that we're coming back we're building back slowly so we got nine trainees and i should say when they arrive in botswana they're not automatically volunteers yes they go through an 11 week training for culture language for their technical work um 
um, medical, everything, they get, they get trained and then they are assessed at the end of that training and we determine whether they can be sworn in as volunteers. Wow. So they take an oath of service, they take an oath for the, to the U.S. and they take an oath of Peace Corps service to their communities. Wow. So that is the ceremony we're holding on Thursday, November 10th. Yesterday. Indeed. That okay. We held. So, um, yes, we'll be, um, we'll be hosting a ceremony where those nine trainees will officially become volunteers. And the following day, they will go out to their communities to begin their two-year service. Well, it's Gabs of Empower to engage your world. That's how we wrap up. Let me give you this opportunity, Mpo, to share your parting statements as we continue with the conversation. My next segment coming your way is to ask the Shah Jay. Um, Mpo, your closing statement. What would you like to say to Botswana that are listening to the show in line with the Peace Corps in line with the relationship between the U.S. government and the BW government? Um, I think one quick uh, thing that comes to my mind is that um, these are volunteers. Yes. And um, most of the time we'll hear people thinking that uh, they're here to take people's jobs. Yes. They're not here to take people's jobs. Yes. They're here on voluntary basis. Wow. Hence, they don't get paid. Yes. Someone has to uh, put his or her life on hold for two years to come and volunteer, you know, his skills, uh, his expertise. Yes. Uh, with the lo- uh, with our local communities. Yes. So um, I think it's one thing that um, you know, we like I would clarify. like to I would like to clarify. Yes, sir. But um, you know, the, the parting uh, the parting um, you know moment for me will be, you know, um, it's nice to see someone coming miles and miles away from home mm-hmm. and not having a problem working in box pits. Yes. Or yes. Paragarungu. Yes. Or Hortlacht. Yes. Which some of these places, as I mentioned them now, I know that there's some of our, you and know, Bazwana fellow. I've we never have been never, there. I've never, never been to Malik. Michael Malet- Swift, I have never been there. You have never been to Malik Mani. So yes. the, the villages that I have mentioned, these are like villages in the corners of our of our country, all the way uh, to the top, to the uh, to the bottom, wow. as well as both sides. But uh, we place volunteers across and in the middle. Wow. So um, wherever, like Daniel has indicated, uh, wherever there's a need um, based on what the community has requested, we'll go there. Powerful stuff. Daniela, let me give you this opportunity to share your parting statement. Oh, I would have to just thank profusely the government of Botswana for Hello. inviting Peace Corps to be here. I, I would say starting with uh, the president, the, the minister of foreign affairs who support our volunteers being here, our, our uh, ministries with whom we partner, including health, education, local government and rural development, of course, Napa, with whom we work very closely. And I would be remiss not to thank our communities for all their support of our volunteers. We could not have volunteers out in all these communities that Poe was talking about without the support of our communities. Well, shared prosperity, and that is what the Stars and Stripes radio show is all about, highlighting the bilateral relationship between the U.S. government and the BW government. Whether we like it or not, the spirit of volunteerism is important for the global citizen and for humanity as a whole. Look out for it. Ask the Shah Jay coming up next. At Gibbs underscore FM. It's Gabs FM, power to engage your world. And of course, we're continuing the show into the next segment called Ask the Shah J or Ask the Acting Ambassador. This is where you get to ask the U.S. Embassy any burning questions that you might have. And of course, Her Excellency, Amanda Jacobson, this is what you had to say. Uh, your Excellency, what are some of the internship opportunities for Botswana in line with the U.S. Embassy, in line with human capital? That's a very important component in terms of driving us to a knowledge-based economy. This is what she had to say. The U.S. Embassy currently offers internship opportunities for U.S. university students, both in the United States and overseas. That's actually how I became aware of the U.S. Foreign Service. I was a political economic intern in Montevideo, Uruguay, and an environmental intern in San Jose, Costa Rica. We do not currently offer internship opportunities at U.S. Embassy Botswana. We do encourage people to stay abreast of our employment opportunities, though, on our Facebook page. 
Thank you so much, Your Excellency, and thank you for always being willing to engage the nation of Botswana with some of these questions. If you'd like to ask the U.S. Embassy any questions, feel free to follow them on all their social media pages. Kings and Queens, you're on the Stars and Stripes radio show. Hashtag America and Botswana. Good morning. The Stars and Stripes show is brought to you by the U.S. Embassy. It's Gabs FM, powered to engage your world. And of course, thank you so much for choosing Gabs FM. And if you've just joined us, you're part and parcel of the Stars and Stripes radio show, proudly brought to you by the U.S. Mission in partnership with Gabs FM, America in Botswana. And of course, this is the segment that you love and I love. And of course, in the building, we have Education Advisor Wabile Tau from the U.S. Embassy Public Affairs Office to bring some exciting and highlighting different programming that the U.S. Embassy have for you Talk to us Today we're talking Volunteerism That is it And I always Today I'm echoing Everything that I've been saying If Mm -hmm. you're thinking about Studying in the US Then this is one aspect Which you must understand Mm -hmm. The US is all about Giving back And so If you're trying To make yourself Competitive It is not only About your grades Mm -hmm. Your grades You can get all A stars Mm -hmm. But then if you Do not show universities That you yourself Have civic engagement Or civic engagement Portfolio in any way You're putting yourself down And so I love the fact Even you know We're bringing a Peace Corps here To actually For, for people to remind them mm, Like mm. do you know what um, There are people Who have PhDs Who are professors Who have degrees Captains of industry I know And they're taking time out And all of this Is actually building Their portfolio Sometimes you don't need To go to school In order to build Your portfolio Build your portfolio From grassroots Whatever you are Whether you You're still in primary, junior high. You're still at secondary high. This is your time. There are many organizations that we have supported as the U.S. government that you can volunteer. Absolutely. Let me just mention the three that we're currently working with. Yes. We're working with a a trust called Now For Them. They are doing women empowerment in business training. Sarah Mula. Sarah Mula, shout out to you. And there there is an organization you can go and volunteer your time at. Mm -hmm. We have Young Minds Mm -hmm. who are currently running our alumni innovation, um, alumni engagement innovation fund grant. And they're doing model parliament. Please uh, get hold of Lana, get hold of Tim. I know. And this is for women empowerment and doing all amazing work. There's Dreams Alive as well that we've Mm -hmm. supported and they're currently helping us with the opportunity fund to assist learners who cannot actually uh, afford for standardized testings Mm -hmm. while applying to the U.S. Again, another organization you can volunteer at. I'm only here to echo volunteer. You know, and one last, want to say big shout out to Oyebo Mm -hmm. as well because even currently we have about four Oyebo volunteers Mm -hmm. who are currently in Washington, Mm D.C. and they are doing uh, election, um, what is this, viewing? Okay. Because election oh, is good. Oh, mm-hmm. wow, the midterms. I know okay, the midterms. Nice. So they are right now in the U.S. Wow. and through the volunteering work. Mm-hmm. And these are four young people who are, you know, doors open. Mm-hmm. And this is how it happens. So please give us a call uh, at our office. Go into our website, uh, bw.usaembassy.gov. And please book an appointment to come and see. Queen, oh, I love that. <laughs> uh, absolutely. <laughs> Education USA office. Character development is an important component of your everyday life. And you know, while you're speaking, I had a light bulb moment is that it would be so cool to do a Peace Corps week where we challenge the private sector to get involved in volunteerism. Like, especially our CEOs in that space. Yeah. You know, we could learn from the different principles that Peace Corps represents. And shout out to the BW government and, of course, the U.S. government for putting together these kind of initiatives that result in impact of yeah. the normal Motswana. Well, thank you so thank much. Thank you so much. Let me give you this opportunity to share your parting statement. All I can say is that Botswana Bezuduloma Makwait. Let's see what they know. We can learn a lot from the U.S. government. We can learn a lot about the model of Peace Corps. If you can just give back and and let us rebuild our economy and let's, you know, learn from this partnership. Absolutely. Well, it's the Stars and Stripes radio show. The Stars and Stripes show was brought to you by the U.S. Embassy.